Hello, in today's video we got this 2010 Ford F-150 which was towed in due to a crank but no start condition and by the sound of it, I don't hear the fuel pump coming on. And I know these trucks have an issue with the fuel pump fuse, so let's go ahead and check the fuse condition. And the fuse we're looking for will be located here in the engine bay fuse box. After opening it, we'll be looking for fuse 27, which by the look of it is this yellow 20 amp fuse. And if we get a closer look at it, you can see that the fuse is partially burnt, and that's never a good thing. Well, let's pull the fuse out and see how it looks. I'll be using some needle nose pliers to pull it out. If it comes out, that is. Finally. Wow, look at that, all mounted and crispy. Looks like the plastic melted all over the contacts. Guess that explains why it wasn't making contact anymore. Well, luckily it didn't damage the fuse block. Just partially mounted the area around where the fuse was. So to repair this issue, we will be performing a fuse relocation on this truck. This kit can be purchased at your local Ford dealership, or even ordered online through Amazon and many other places. And unfortunately, this is a common problem with the 2009 to 2014 Ford trucks. So if you have one, you may want to keep an eye on this fuse. Well anyways, let's get started. And first thing you want to do is disconnect the battery, starting with the negative terminal. Using an 8mm socket to loosen, and then wiggle the terminal off. Making sure that we place the terminal somewhere where it won't reconnect itself. Now we can remove the battery cables from the distribution block using a 10mm socket plus a ratchet to remove the nut that holds it on. Once we get the nut off, let's slide off the cable terminals. After removing them, I like to put the nut back on so I don't lose it. Next, we can lift up and remove this wire guide using a clip remover or a screwdriver may also work. To access the underside of the distribution block, let's unclip these four retainer tabs that hold it to the brackets. It'll have two here on the front side and two on the back. Pulling the tabs back slightly will allow it to slide upwards and off the bracket. And now for these other two. To access the wiring, we'll want to remove this lower cover, which will have 8 retaining clips to unhook. Going around the fuse box separating the cover as you unhook them. Doing this will keep the retaining clips from clipping back in. Now that you got them all unhooked, lift up the fuse box and tilt the box back to access the wiring. And this is our relocation kit and what's included. We got two pieces of heat shrink tubing a new larger size 20 amp fuse, a wire with the terminal spliced in on one end, and we also got instructions. Well, this is how they want you to join the wires and solder them together. And then we could add the heat shrink tubing over the solder joint. Well, let's get back to the vehicle. 
At this point, you want to verify the location where the wire will be, and it'll be the second fuse on the left in the second row. So as we tilt it over, this thicker blue wire with the red stripe sits in that spot, not to be confused with the smaller wire of the same color in the next slot. So after confirming and double checking, this is the wire that we're going to want to cut and splice into our new wire and fuse location. So I'll pull the wire out more, then using a wire cutter, I'll cut it giving me as much wire as we can, but yet leaving enough to put heat shrink tubing on the remaining piece that's attached to the fuse box. After cutting it, pull the wire out far enough to be able to strip the wire. Now using wire strippers, strip it to expose about 3 quarters of an inch of wire. Now we grab our black wire from the kit, placing the bigger heat shrink tubing over the wire before soldering it. Also pulling off the insulation piece that was left on the wire. At this point, we'll want to wrap the black longer wire strands around the shorter wire, trying to make it look as clean as possible, yet making sure it'll have good contact. Now using my soldering iron and some 6040 solder, once we get the soldering iron hot enough, we place it under the wire strands and slowly feed the solder into the wire strands. The heat will draw it through the wire so it bonds the wires together. And when you're doing this, you'll want to avoid coming in contact with the harness under it and avoid contacting the distribution block. Making sure that we got a good amount of solder through the strands with just a little extra just to make sure it won't ever separate. And this is the end result. It's got good penetration of the solder with a strong connection that will not separate. After letting it cool down, let's bend the wire down and slide the heat shrink tube over it till it covers the solder that we just did and covers any potentially exposed wires. Once we're happy with it, let's get the heat gun. This heat shrink tubing will shrink when exposed to heat, but you'll want to be continuously moving the heat gun from side to side, avoiding damage to any other wires or the harness. And this is what it should look like when you're done. Now we grab our other piece of heat shrink tubing and slide it over the exposed wire that we cut that remains on the fuse box. Now we use a heat gun on it.
and once it's properly shrank down, pinch the end with some pliers. Alright, now our new fuse location will be fuse 70, which is the 8th fuse on the bottom row. So we count 8 fuses on the bottom. Which puts us next to this pink fuse. Now we grab our black wire and slide that spade terminal into the empty slot next to that fuse. And once you hear it click in, it should be locked in place. Now give it a couple pulls just to confirm. And here we got a view of the underside with our black wire in the slot. And here's what it should look like from the top view. Now all that's left is putting in our new fuse. While everything looks good, now just slide the wire under the distribution block. Clicking on the lower panel with all eight tabs, also at the same time, sliding the distribution block onto the bracket. After you get them in, just go around making sure that all tabs are clicked in. And it looks like they're all clicked in. Remove the nut that we put back on. Then reinstall our battery cables onto the distribution block. Followed by the nut. Now we can tighten it or torque it down to about 80 inch pounds. Click back in this wire guide clip. Add the included sticker to the fuse box so people know that you did the relocation already. Then finally reconnect and tighten down the battery terminal. We're now ready to start the truck. If this was the only problem, it should start. And that's a satisfying sound after having the truck towed in. Great job to those who followed this tutorial. Well that just about does it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful and informative. If so, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.